First of all, let me just apologize. I know, I know. Another Stelter video. I'm asking a lot of all of you. In the last two weeks, I've done like six videos on this bloated ham man. It's taken a very real toll on all of our minds and blood pressure. And for that, I apologize. But how am I expected to let this pass? Is Twitter biased against conservatives? Yes, absolutely, 100 percent it is undeniable to those of us that still see four lights instead of the imagined five and i think that i can easily prove this but i'll save that for the end that's the title of this new working paper by professors at mit and yale in the words of professor david rand the root of the challenge uh, when looking at this is that republicans conservatives are substantially more likely to share misinformation or fake news than democrats are Thus, as social media's platforms, the policies aimed at reducing nonsense and boosting real news would ensnare Republican users more often. All right, I'm sorry, I must stop it again. I've looked at this research paper, and at no time do they even define what misinformation and disinformation are. The reason for that is because they're trying to establish that those things are what their political opposition say and are more susceptible to. And the way this works is you're supposed to hear professors from MIT and Yale and just instantly accept whatever Brian Stelter says. Not only does the media constantly get it wrong and it's always in one direction, but every time Time they tell us about these experts they're wrong about everything the experts told us that lockdowns were a good idea the experts told us that the coronavirus doesn't spread when you're protesting for a certain political ideology the experts told us that inflation was going to be temporary the experts said that you're a racist and a conspiracy theorist if you suggested that the coronavirus may have escaped from the Wuhan lab remember all those intelligence experts that said the Hunter Biden laptop story was Russian disinformation I could go on and on but more often than not these so-called experts are wrong and they're just pushing an agenda we're gonna dig in a lot more to this clip but first give me just 30 seconds to tell you about this free coin offer from noble gold for years now people have been setting up a little contest between crypto and gold both carry stuff and they travel from a to b but they do different jobs gold's job is to keep the value of your money safe and preserve its value and since Ukraine and the oil and inflation crisis, it's done a brilliant job compared to stocks and other investments. So if you're worried about what's going on right now and who isn't, just talk to an expert at Noble Gold about precious metals IRAs for your retirement. They'll put you straight on your options and hold your hand through the whole setup process. And this month, for any qualified IRA, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a thank you. Call 877-646-5347 now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. You can also check out the link in the description or pinned comment. Make sure to tell them Drone Tech sent you. This research team found wide bipartisan support for platforms trying to reduce misinformation. People don't want QAnon craziness all up in their news feeds. I'm sorry, I have to stop again. QAnon craziness all up in their news feeds? I spend a lot of time talking to people on the right. And you know what I never hear about? QAnon. In fact, the only time I hear about QAnon is when Democrat state media propagandists are trying to use it to justify censorship of their political opponents. But, Professor Rand says, putting these two observations together shows the problem. In responding to bipartisan demand, platforms may wind up enforcing on conservatives more than on liberals. Now, complaints about conservatives being censored online, they are core to the GOP's identity. Is that why Democrats think that way more black people are shot by police than actually are? Or that Democrats are always misinformed when these shootings happen, leading to completely unjustified riots? Why do Democrats believe in hands up, don't shoot? Well, because CNN and other networks promoted that disinformation. Why do Democrats think that Jacob Blake was wrongly shot by police to the point that they went out and rioted? Because the media lied and didn't provide all the facts. It's almost like they wanted riots before the 2020 election. Why do so many Democrats think that Kyle Rittenhouse is a white supremacist murderer when in fact he was attacked and defended himself against several criminal white people? Why did so many Democrats believe that the Covington Catholic school kids were the racist aggressors in that incident when it actually turned out that the adult Native American group and the adult black Israelites were the actual racist aggressors. Why is it that so many Democrats still to this day believe that border agents were whipping Haitian migrants with whips? This despite the fact that agents were cleared of all charges. And the photographer who 
who took the photos said that they were misconstrued by the media and never saw any whipping. Despite that, as of yesterday, NPR and MSNBC are still spreading disinformation. And so Joe Biden has had so many opportunities, horrific opportunities, like when we saw Haitian black people being whipped by men on horses. It's a made up tale. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. We've been told that the mounted border patrol officers the president accused of whipping migrants have been notified they will not face criminal charges. So when is the president going to apologize to them? Uh, there is a process and an investigation that's gone through the Department of Homeland Security. I don't have any update on that. You accuse these officers of brutal and inappropriate measures now that they've been told they will not be criminally charged. Will you apologize? And Peter, there was an investigation into their behavior. So that investigation is playing out. Is Whenever there, it's uh, going to be announced, the Department of Homeland Security will announce that. <laughs> Look, I could just go on and on like this. And if you don't believe me, just check out my huge library of videos. For years now, I've been documenting their spreading of disinformation and misinformation as a weapon against their political opponents. That's the entire point of this channel. Let's just get through the rest of this clip and I'll share my final thoughts. It plays right into the cancel culture narrative. It powers Trumpian fundraising efforts. And now it is at the heart of Elon Musk's hostile takeover bid for Twitter. Right-wing media is celebrating Musk's bid, saying he's going to rescue free speech. He's going to reinstate it for millions of Americans and people around the world who've been muzzled by Twitter. And the villain in their story is, of course, the mainstream media. Musk is getting a lot of criticism, a lot of skepticism. And, of course, Brian Stelter thinks that the actual villain in the story is the guy fighting for free speech. I'd like to issue a challenge to Professor Rand and Brian Stelter. Just show us all one single example of a scandal story that hurt Democrats and was promoted by the media that turned out to be completely false. I'm asking this because I genuinely can't think of a single example. Every single example that I can think of cut against Republicans. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you enjoyed this, please hit that like button, share, and then leave a comment to let us all know what you think. Thanks a lot. <coughs>